is this real life? Like, is this actually happening? Today, Apple has just announced Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro for the iPad Pro. This has got to be the wildest example of CCRP in action. If you aren't familiar with it, CCRP is my method for figuring out the validity of leaks. It stands for credibility, correlation, repetition, and proximity. And as far as Final Cut and Logic Pro, this is something that we basically haven't really heard anything more than speculation of it coming eventually for years. So there really hasn't been a whole lot of credible, correlating, repeating, and proximal rumors. And then just randomly, all of a sudden, Apple's like, boom, here it is. Go for it. It's, it's available on uh, May 23rd. So today we're gonna dive into this and figure out everything that you need to know about Final Cut and Logic for the iPad Pro, which models are supported, why is this a standalone subscription service, and how does it even work? So let's get started, but first, today's video is sponsored by me. That's right, Genius Bar Goes Dark is an event that I'm gonna be hosting the day after WWDC this year. There is a lot of new stuff to talk about, including Apple's upcoming mixed reality headset and <laughs> this Final Cut Pro update for the iPad Pro that just kinda of came out of nowhere. The event is gonna be a ton of fun and it's brought to you by Clean My Mac, which is the ultimate tool for keeping your Mac running perfectly. They've been a long time supporter of the channel and I've used them for a long time. So big thanks to them. GeniusBarGoesDark.com is our website. You'll find that linked down below. Grab your tickets because this is gonna be a fun one. Now, speaking of being a fun one, let's dive into this new Final Cut update. The first thing that jumps out to me is we have this iPhone camera looking playhead control on the right side. And this is something that's really interesting to me because Final Cut Pro as it has existed for over 20 years now requires a mouse and keyboard. So how do you move that to a touch screen? Well, fortunately, Apple has some videos for us so that we're not completely in the dark until this thing launches. Now, as we saw up top, there is a jog wheel which allows you to make fine adjustments. And it looks like that Apple Pencil is in the hover mode here on the M2 chip for letting you scrub through footage. Obviously on desktop Final Cut Pro, when you mouse over your footage, it shows it in the preview window without moving the playhead. But on the iPad, if you're using your finger or you don't have the Apple Pencil hover mode, I assume you would just be using your finger to move the playhead. So you'd probably have to grab the playhead so that you're not moving the timeline. In the video for Final Cut Pro and Logic that Apple posted, you can see some of these in action. Here you can see how grabbing the playhead with your finger allows you to scrub through your footage. You can also see how pinch to zoom would allow you to adjust elements in your player, which is definitely different. And being able to physically manipulate keyframed items definitely could allow for some really cool effects. Now they do have some other really cool features like this live drawing feature, which allows you to animate drawings. This is something that has existed in plugins on desktop Final Cut Pro, but this to my knowledge is completely new. So that's pretty cool. There's also pretty normal and expected features like viewing and editing HDR because Obviously, you have Liquid Retina display on the M1 and M2 iPad Pro. And of course, if you add a Magic Keyboard or a Smart Keyboard Folio, that gives you the key commands that Final Cut Pro is famous for. I personally think that that is going to be invaluable because as someone who has used Final Cut 10 for over 10 years, I need my key commands. Now there's a real focus here on multi-camera editing and this is something that I find very interesting because it is something that exists on Final Cut Pro. They've mainly adapted it here. So you can see we have this new full screen interface. There's also this timeline interface which allows you to switch with that little bar down in the bottom. I really like that layout. But here's where things get really cool because we now have fast cut automation. And so Apple says here that they're leveraging the power of Apple Silicon and machine learning. And essentially what this is going to be able to do theoretically is some of these AI power tasks like scene removal masks, automatically cropping to isolate the subject for vertical video and voice isolation for removing background noise. They've also got new title templates 
which I really hope will make their way to Desktop Final Cut Pro. All of this stuff really should be on Desktop Final Cut Pro as well. It's interesting that they're launching some of these features and revamped titles, which really haven't changed in Final Cut Pro in like five or 10 years. And they're, they're launching these on the iPad. I mean, look at this. We've got these dynamic full screen titles. They've got new effects here. Look at these new filters. I would love to have some of these built in. They've also got new soundtracks. Dude, we haven't had new soundtracks since like iMovie 11. That's where most of the sound effects in Final Cut Pro are from. I would love to see all of these make their way to desktop. Hey, look at that. Welcome to Tech and Gadgets. They know who they're marketing to. Welcome to Tech and Gadgets. But of course, it wouldn't be Final Cut Pro without third-party plugins. And fortunately, while it's probably not going to be available yet, they do say third-party content coming soon. So what iPads are able to run the new iPad Final Cut Pro? Well, you're gonna need something with an M1 chip, unfortunately. The requirements for Logic, which we'll get into in a second, are a little bit lower, but for Final Cut Pro, you need the M1 or M2 11 or 12.9 inch iPad Pros. And that means you can also use a fifth generation iPad Air. So let's talk about Logic Pro. This is an area that I'm less familiar with, but I know a lot of you guys use it, so I wanna go through this. And it seems like we have a pretty similar layout here. It's been adapted from the existing Logic Pro, and honestly, it does have a little bit more of a GarageBand look in the same way that the Final Cut Pro update has a little bit more of an iMovie look. It remains to be seen whether this is gonna be as usable as the desktop versions thereof, but it definitely is a step above iMovie and GarageBand. So let's get into some of these features here. We have a new interface that's built for touch. As you might expect, Apple didn't wanna just copy paste the applications over because they want to take advantage of those touch screens and with a touch screen for making beats as shown here that honestly makes a ton of sense but one of the things that they made sure to keep were the plug-in tiles this is a staple of logic pro i don't even use it and i know about these because everyone uses plug-in tiles they also show the Apple Pencil being used for detailed automation and precise edits. And of course, you can add keyboard shortcuts by adding a magic keyboard or smart folio. Oh, and look at that. We got new music as well. Apple, which hasn't added new content to Final Cut or Logic in like a hundred years. And now they're starting with the iPad. Who would have thought? Now they do have a number of pro plugins, so to speak, that they're launching with. So they've got three examples here. One is Sample Alchemy which you can use to sort of create malleable sound. They've got these software instruments. This is a staple of Logic Pro, so it's good to see that coming to the iPad. And of course, they've got some signature reverbs and delays, vintage EQs, compressors, and modulation effects. All of that is built in. Look guys, I don't even know what all of this stuff is. We got Beat Breaker, Quick Sampler, Step Sequencer, Drum Machine Designer, and Live Loops. That's a lot going on here. So, and fortunately, if you do have an iPad Pro, you'll be happy to know that you don't necessarily need the M1 and the M2 chip. To install Logic Pro, you can use any iPad with the A12 Bionic chip or later. That means that you can use the iPad 8th generation or newer. The iPad mini 5th generation or 6th generation are both supported. And you can even use the iPad Air from the 3rd generation or later. And of course, 2018 iPad Pros, all of those are supported. So that's a pretty long list of supported iPads. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, personally, I don't have high hopes for a fifth gen iPad mini running Logic Pro, but this is a pretty good update. This is not something that we were expecting, but I'm glad that it's here. It's been a long time coming and I can't wait to check out realistically more Final Cut Pro because I don't know how to use Logic. So stay tuned for that coming out at the end of the month. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to get your tickets to Genius Bar Goes Dark and I'll see you in the next one.